The Faith at Work movement is on a cusp, destined for great things. God uses people from all kinds of walks of life and all kinds of professions to advance His kingdom. Work is a crucible that God uses to refine us. Everybody's work matters to God. The only thing that really brings lasting change is the gospel of Jesus Christ applied to every area of life. Leadership is people who can take other people's pain and turn it into passion. Are you overwhelmed by Jesus Christ? Well, thank you, Marcus. I particularly appreciate the uh, free commercial for Reframe there. And... Um, Trust you take advantage of it. It's an absolute delight and privilege to be able to honour Paul Stevens today for his contribution to the Faith at Work movement. I knew Paul first as his student, impacted for life by his teaching on vocation, work and ministry at Regent College in the early 1990s. Characteristically, Paul stayed in touch with me after I graduated and some 10 years later invited me to apply for a faculty position at Regent with the classic line, what are you doing with the rest of your life? In due course, Paul became an incredibly supportive mentor and encourager as I taught and led as his successor in marketplace theology. These experiences of Paul as an inspirational thinker, an organiser and a personal encourager are characteristics I want to highlight as we honour his pioneering contribution among us. Paul Stevens' self-stated personal mission is this, to empower the whole people of God to integrate their faith and life from Monday to Sunday. Now, today these aspirations remain challenging. But when Paul embarked on his writing and teaching ministry in the 1980s, they were far more unconventional and controversial. In those days, many of us in this room would have shared the frustrations of those, like region alum Don Flo, whose desire to serve Christ in business seemed unrecognised and unwanted in his Presbyterian church in Greensboro. For many like Don in that generation, Paul Stevens was their voice, our voice. Paul was a groundbreaker in challenging the status quo concerning the nature of church, championing the importance of the scattered as well as the gathered community. This was the theme of his 1985 book, Liberating the Laity. Its subtitle, Equipping All the Saints for Ministry, captures well Paul's ironic but straightforward biblical tone. Paul spent 20 years as a pastor, never lost his love for the church, even while campaigning for its renewal. But nor did he lose his love for the Bible, even while teaching in a theological college. Fifteen years later, he published again on the same theme, albeit in a less winsome tone this time. What American readers know as The Other Six Days is known in Britain by Paul's preferred and provocative title, The Abolition of the Laity. As one reviewer noted, it could equally have been called the abolition of the clergy. Pioneering work takes determination. And in this mature classic, Paul sets out lucidly, firmly and thoroughly how a biblical perspective must conclude that all of us are part of the laos, the people of God. And all of us are kleros. God's special inheritance, called to minister and serve him in his majestic mission to redeem all that he has made. As the subtitle of the book suggests, this empowering of the whole people of God involves much more than simply recognition or equal status. 
It's about the release of God's people as his ministers and missionaries into the world, able to express and integrate biblical faith in all of life. This breadth of vision has included significant publishing and teaching over the years on topics as diverse as marriage, parenting, spirituality, pastoral care, numerous biblical commentaries, and most recently on the theme of ageing. But a major subject of concern for Paul, and of course for us at this conference, has been work. Work Matters, it seems a popular title for a book these days, is Paul's highly accessible 2012 publication. It distills a lifetime of biblical reflection, teaching and praxis, all to reinforce the point that work matters to God in all its messy detail, that is, in all matters. Over the years, many thousands of Christians have been equipped by Paul's ministry to see their work afresh as part of God's call on their lives. And I, I'm one of them. There's one more point that needs to be made about Paul's trailblazing theological message. It's captured well in the title of his 2006 book, Doing God's Business. In other words, it's not just that all Christians are called to serve, or even that work is a part of our calling, but it is that work and even something as apparently corrupting as business has the potential to be caught up into nothing less than the missionary purposes of God. Arguably, the most radical challenge to the false sacred secular dualism that separates Monday and Sunday is the argument that in and through our work, fully yielded to Christ, we can participate in God's mission to reconcile all things to himself. All this being said, it would be wrong if we concluded that Paul Stevens' life mission to empower the whole people of God to integrate their faith and life from Monday to Sunday is simply a message that he's pioneered as a teacher, author, and speaker, though of course it is that. Paul is also an organiser, an organiser whose commitment to faith work integration involves attempts to realise his vision in concrete terms. What's been characteristic of Paul's approach to organisation has not been a carefully worked out functional strategy, but rather a deeply attentive relational one responsive to those individuals, often former students, who shared the same heart and vision and whom Paul wanted to support and encourage. It's that relational strategy that's enabled Paul to have an impact, not only in his native Canada or the wider Anglosphere, but also in South Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, China, the Philippines and other Asian cultures. It's no accident that the Marketplace Ministry Handbook arose from his partnership with the late Pete Hammond, IVP, or that what one reviewer described as the stunningly comprehensive and exceptionally readable complete book of everyday Christianity was produced with Australian academic Robert Banks. Other examples include Paul's collaboration with vocation expert Gray Pennell, with Malaysian Alvin Ung in the authorship of Taking Your Soul to Work, published in 2010, his teaching and publishing collaboration with Clive Lim and Rick Goosen in the area of leadership. But in addition to this publishing work, many theological schools around the world now have marketplace-friendly curricula that have been shaped in partnership with Paul Stevens. Paul's been instrumental in the creation of several institutions focused on marketplace ministry and mission. Most recently, the Institute of Marketplace Transformation, active both in Vancouver and South Korea, and characteristically formed again with one of his former students. These are just some highlights from Paul Stevens' incredibly energetic and fruitful ministry. 
Paul was supposed to retire at Regent College, having recruited me, but he's still going strong as Professor Emeritus. Let me conclude by offering three lessons that I draw from Paul's pioneering contribution to the faith at work movement for us today. First, his heart to empower the whole people of God is larger than faith at work. His impact on the workplace movement arises from his conviction that God's mission is bigger but includes the workplace. Does our vision encompass the whole church and the whole world? Second, Paul's vision to see God's people integrate their faith and life has been sharpened by his love for and dedication to Scripture. It's the Bible that's given Paul the insight and conviction to break very hard theological ground. Is Scripture the first place we go for wisdom and insight? Finally, like a true pastor, it's above all a commitment to working relationally that's enabled Paul Stevens to have such an impact, to join faith and work from Monday to Sunday. Are we building relationally rather than pragmatically or functionally? Paul, we thank you for being our voice, for your big heart to empower all God's people, for your example and biblical vision for the integration of faith and life, and for your very personal encouragement to live it out, Monday to Sunday. Thank you.